Tenakota Katoa, no my Hari Mai, Ko Phil Jones, Aho. Uh, welcome to the third in our series of webinars focused on our climate action toolbox. Um, also, hello to Holly. Kia ora. Hello, everyone. My name is Holly. Um, work at the Sustainable Business with Phil on our climate action work and really looking forward to being here today and talking about moving goods with you guys. Cool. Thanks, Holly. Um, yes, yeah, so this, as I say, this is the third in our series of webinars. Each week we focused on a different part of the Climate Action Toolbox. This week, as Holly says, it's on um, how we transport our goods around the place. Um, following on from ones we focused on how we as people travel around the moving people one and also what we do in our offices. So uh, no my hockey my to those who have joined um, those previous webinars. Um, thanks for coming back. Um, hope you enjoy this one too. Um, so just a very quick background. I appreciate some of you have heard this before in previous weeks, but the toolbox was launched about eight weeks ago. And so far we've had some really good um, usage of the tool. Um, we're up to getting on for uh, 10,000 uh, unique users of the toolbox so far. So really, really good to see that level of usage in quite a short period of time. Um, so in terms of the toolbox, it wouldn't have been made possible without the help of our partners. Um, of, uh, ICA, the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Authority, um, Waka Kotahi, New Zealand Transport Agency, New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, um, BNZ, Meridian Energy and um, Business Stock GOVT team at MV, um, uh, the platform on which the toolbox is hosted. Um, so we've been promoting the tool heavily um, to different groups um, and we've had some really good help with that promotion. So um, thanks to those who have helped promote the toolbox. Um, and if you haven't had the chance already, please, please do so. Um, we appreciate all the um, assistance we can to kind of spread the word about having this climate action toolbox for smaller businesses. Um, so I think that's probably um, enough of an intro. One of the really cool things today is that we've got Chris from First Class Gardens and Jade from Neuralite, who will be joining us later. Um, they're two of the businesses that are featured in the toolbox and we'll be able to talk with them about what actions they've been taking in terms of climate action. So some really cool stories, stories there. But what we'll do initially um, is just give a bit of intro to the toolbox itself. So Holly, do you wanna um, take awesome. over? Yes, thanks Phil. Um, yeah, so we've created a short video that explains um, how to use the toolbox and how to get the most out of it. So we will share that now. Um, as background, and then, yeah, looking forward to hearing from Jade and Chris. The impacts of climate change are being felt everywhere. It's time for urgent action. And that's why we've come together and created something to help Kiwi businesses to get started. It's called the Climate Action Toolbox. The Toolbox is a free and simple to use self-assessment tool and you'll find it on the award-winning business.govt.nz platform. The Toolbox focuses on key areas to help reduce your carbon footprint, whether you're in an office, factory or out and about, how you move people and goods and how your products are designed and made. You'll get tailored advice based on your business. Explore actions with simple step-by-step -step guides and learn where you can make the most impact. Shortlist your favourite ideas and save your plan so you can come back later. And be motivated by what other businesses, just like yours, are already doing. There are some great benefits to taking climate action. Sure, you'll probably sleep better, but you could also save money, boost your sales and reputation, attract and keep staff, and inspire other businesses to be more sustainable. Be part of the team. Start taking climate action today. Together, we can make a difference. Fantastic. So hopefully that explains a little bit more on how the toolbox can be used. And as Phil said, um, we re really encourage you to share this as well. So just some background. Um, over a year ago, we did some research into um, small businesses and wanted to understand, you know, 
the barriers and challenges, but also opportunities that they were currently facing in terms of taking climate action. And what we found was um, the major one was that they're often time poor, cost is a big issue, and there is a lack of knowledge. So when they do start to you know, go into what they could do to take climate action, it's, it was often a very confusing landscape on you know, where to get the best information from. So that's why we designed the toolbox. Um, that's why we've collaborated. Um, we wanted to create something free, easy to use, um, and sort of a, an awesome first step for any small business starting their climate action journey. So it's planned to be a self-serve um, experience. Go on, um, tell us a bit about what you do, and it will sort of tell you your key impact areas and um, where you should be looking to reduce your emissions. Um, so yeah, so really looking forward to having a chat with Chris and Jade later on. So um, yeah, today we're focusing on moving goods in particular. So that's all about avoiding air freight, buying local, um, moving to electric, um, using your current fleet as efficiently as possible, and also collaborating with your suppliers. So we'll be di di diving into some of that detail um, shortly. Um, we want this um, session to be as interactive as possible. So please feel free to um, use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen um, and we'll plan to answer those either throughout or um, we've got some time at the end for questions as well. So to kick things off, um, a poll. If you've, if you've joined one of our previous webinars, um, you've probably answered this already, but really keen to understand if um, of those that are viewing who has visited the toolbox and what um, actions were identified as high priority for your business. So I am going to launch that now. So have a go at answering this. Um, so have you visited the toolbox before? A um, few different options there. If you haven't, let us know, that's absolutely fine. Or if you have, how far along the journey have you got? Have you created an action plan? A um, few answers coming in. And then um, what was rated as high priority? Awesome. Give you a couple more seconds to answer those questions. Still waiting for a few of you to answer. Cool. I might wrap that up now. Cool, awesome to see that majority of people have visited, or everyone has visited the toolbox, that's great. And or most of you have completed the assessment but not yet developed an action plan. So hopefully today when we dive into some of those actions um, that will get you comfortable on, um, you know, actually what you can include in your action plan. And then going into, um, the high priority areas um, coming out on top, we've got moving people, moving goods. So that's fantastic as well, given we're here today to talk about um, the moving goods impact area. Cool. All right, Phil, back over to you. Lovely. Thank you, Holly. Yeah, it's always interesting to see those uh, usage figures. Um, so thanks for that. Um, engaging with that. Uh, we've got a couple of polls coming up as well. So we like the polls, so keep uh, keep the uh, engagement. So um, yeah, so just a bit of background in terms of the moving people, you know, area and uh, I'm not sure to what extent you're familiar with kind of the big picture and, and to what extent moving goods impacts on our carbon emissions. But um, basically in New Zealand, our light and heavy trucks um, and vehicles contribute about a third of um, the carbon emissions from our road transport sector. Um, and that uh, proportion is increasing. So basically the rest of that is cars. So two thirds is cars and about a third is light and heavy trucks and buses. So, um, it, and it is increasing. So the proportion of emissions from our um, truck fleet is increasing um, for various reasons. Um, so, um, you know, it's clear that road transport itself is 20% of or close to 20% of our carbon emissions. So a really important area we've got to address. And obviously uh, moving goods within that is really important. 
So, um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why we want to emphasize the, this area within the toolbox, obviously. Um, the solutions to that are going to be um, you know, a good mix of um, ways that we're going to, you know, reduce those emissions, you know, to sort of a net, a net zero position by 2050 or sooner, as soon as we can, basically. Um, as Holly mentioned, improving the efficiency of our current usage of vehicles and our current transport system, really important. Um, a mode shift, so particularly in terms of goods, you know, a lot of our um, freight is transported by road, but that's quite carbon intensive. So how can we move that to lower impact modes like um, shipping and rail? Um, new technologies are going to play a part. Um, Chris, when we talk to him, he's going to talk about the steps that his business has taken in terms of moving to electric. Um, and there are other of, um, technologies like hydrogen based uh, vehicles, which will become on stream within the next few years in, in some uh, respect. Um, and also, I guess the, the final one is actually rethinking about our whole way of, of where we get goods from and how far we get goods from. So at the moment, you know, basically, you know, it's, it's a worldwide marketplace. So we get goods from all, all over the place, but to what extent can we um, reduce the, the journeys that our goods need to take to, to get to us, what extent can we localize some of that um, uh, transport? So yeah, it's gonna take several decades obviously to do this transformation and we're gonna need a mix of new technologies, good policy, infrastructure development, and also incentives as well. So uh, I think the package of measures that the Climate Change Commission will um, publish in a few days, literally, and then the work that the government will do to to establish an emissions reduction plan um, will, you know, give a good indication as to the direction of travel across those different areas. Anywho, so that was a bit of a background. In terms of um, what I can share now is we just got a couple of polls just to get your understanding or views on a couple of questions here. Let me just launch this. So the first one is about how much of how of the emissions from our light and vehicle, light and heavy duty trucks increased since about 2001, so 20, last 20 years. And also one on which freight mode reduces the most emissions per unit weight in order from lowest to highest. So let me show those now um, and take your time to read through an answer. Don't be shy, no one's going to be uh, marking you on this one. Good stuff. Quite a few responses coming through. Thank you for those. Give a few more moments, just for a few more to trickle in. Cool, I think maybe, let me cl close, end the polling, Last any last guesses? Cool, let me end the polling, let me share the results. Um, so yes, the first one, um, that the majority of you have got that one right. So they have more than doubled since 2001. So that's quite substantially greater increase than say from our cars, which is only less than 20% since 20 to 2001. So that's very significant. Um, and second question, it is actually, it's a close run thing, this between the two that are most popular there. So it is actually the first one, rail shipping, road and air based on the emission factors, which the Ministry for the Environment publish. Um, but the difference between rail and shipping is, in terms of the lowest is quite marginal. So you can both probably claim you're right there. <laughs> um, cool. Thank you very much for engaging with that. Um, always interesting to hear from you on those kind of things.
Um, Holly, I think it's over back to you, is it? Awesome. Yep. So now I'm going to share with you all the toolbox um, and dive into the moving goods impact area. So you get a feel for um, some of the content that's available for you to have a look at um, and walk you through some of those actions. So this is the landing page um, from the poll. You've all seen this before, which is fantastic. These are our five impact areas. Um, and for the webinars, we're focusing each webinar on one of these. So obviously we're here today to talk about moving goods. So I'm gonna just jump straight into moving goods. And so under moving goods, we've got three key themes. So one looking at, you know, your fleet of vans and trucks and what you've currently got. The other one looking at sort of what materials are coming into your business. And then finally, what's materials that are leaving your business. So we're gonna dive into some of the actions under here. Um, firstly, looking at company vans and trucks. So using vans and trucks more efficiently. So as the video said, um, and as we've said before, they, these actions each have step-by-step -step, um, guides um, that you can use to hopefully make it easier for you to take this action. So if we're looking at using your vans and trucks more efficiently, you'll see we've got different steps with, as well as signposting off to a number of authoritative sites. Um, a lot of them are gen less, so that's the um, ECA initiative. Um, so for this one, we've got the heavy vehicle fleet self-assessment. This is quite a good one, so I'm just gonna click. So this is understanding, you know, how, how, how are you using your vehicles and are you using them as efficiently as possible? And how can you improve the efficiency of them? So you could go in and you plug in um, some information about your fleet. I'm not gonna do that now, but it's definitely worth having a look at this. And then um, support safe fuel efficient driving. So some things to think about um, in your workplace. And keep going down a few steps here. And then some key links, as we've already mentioned, um, as well as why you should take this action. And so each action has a case study. So as Phil said, we're gonna be hearing from Neuralite and First Class Gardens, Jade and Chris later on, who are both case studies, sorry, featured already on the toolbox. Going into switching to electric vans and trucks. Um, so this, again, step by step, a really good um, site here and this action is assess the total cost of ownership. Um, so on this one, you can actually compare different um, models. So for the purposes of this webinar, I'm gonna look at vans. I'm gonna do all of them just so you can see. So this is looking at the vehicle types, apply filters. There's a number of other filters you can use to compare. And as you'll see, you know, you're presented with a number of vans, some are electric, some are hybrid, some are um, petrol, and you can add, add it to then compare later on. Um, really, really good tool to, you know, if you're thinking about investing in a new vehicle and wanting to understand its efficiency. Fantastic. And again, lots of, lots of links off and then a case study. So for this one, we've got first class gardens and under this case study, a bit of information about what they've done to reduce their emissions and then Chris. So as said, we'll be hearing from Chris soon and he'll be deep, taking a deeper dive into um, how they converted their fleet to electric, which is awesome. Finally, uh, the next one, transporting materials to your business. So, Again, step by step, a good one here is, you know, this step two. So this is actually how you can do it. So as Phil said, using alternatives to um, air freight, buying from local suppliers, choosing products and packaging that weigh less and order larger but fewer deliveries. And I know that Neuralite has done this as well. So um, Jade will be, and as you can see, Neuralite case study, Jade will be diving into this later as well. Cool. Finally, one more action that we'll have a look at is cutting emissions when you make deliveries as well. So thinking about the issues, collaborating with your suppliers, 
working on the high impact areas. And I think we've got, yeah, we've got a case study from um, Series Organics. So there's, this is a great company as well. Cool, so hopefully I didn't rush through that too quickly. Um, and you've got a good understanding of what's under moving goods and sort of the different things you can be thinking about to reduce um, your emissions in that area. Um, Phil, do you have anything to add? Are you happy with that? No, that sounds good. I mean, uh, the, the, the actions are there really to have a browse through. And uh, as Holly says, there's lots of good links there. Um, what we've described in terms of step-by-step -step is a kind of indicative um, way of approaching it, but there's, you know, there's different ways, obviously. So it's really a pick and mix approach we, we suggest. No, that sounds good, Holly. Um, and yeah, as Holly mentioned before, please, um, as we go along, ask any questions that we can either answer immediately or um, at the end. So please do that. Um, so yes, yeah, so really good to introduce Chris from First Class Gardens. Chris is based in West Auckland, I think, and um, Jade from Neuralite, um, both of whom Holly just mentioned. So welcome both. Hopefully you'll appear on screen very soon. There we go. Sure, Fantastic. Hi guys. <laughs> Hi. Awesome. Hi, Chris and Jade. Lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Um, so for the next sort of 20 or so minutes, we're going to um, ask you a couple of questions and we'll just have a bit of a conversation, um, hear more about some of the awesome initiatives you've been up to. Um, and yeah, so to kick it off, um, can you both tell us a bit about your business and what you do? Um, yeah. Chris, do you want to start us off? Yeah, certainly. Oh, it's good to be here in a part of this webinar. And yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit about our business. We're First Class Gardens, so we um, cover all of Auckland, and which is a large area for um, for us to cover, which will, is, can be a challenge with the electric vans, but I'll get to that later. Um, we provide um, uh, garden services um, with a focus on sustainability. Fantastic. Thanks, Chris. Over to you, Jade. Hi, um, I'm Jade. I'm the marketing manager of Neuralite uh, Waterproofing. We are suppliers of um, building products um, all throughout New Zealand. So we have roofing, tanking and decking products, um, which we um, have in our warehouses. So we have one in Auckland, one in Christchurch and a 3PL in Wellington. Cool. Great. Um, and then moving on to sort of your case studies, I think. Let's dive into those. Um, how have you reduced emissions through the way you move goods? And um, yeah, how's this journey been going for you and benefits you've seen so far? Jade, let's start with you this time. Uh, yeah, so our business is primarily importing products over from different countries. Um, most of our products are from Europe. So the majority comes from Belgium and Italy. Um, we have been supplying New Zealand for over 55 years and we decided two years ago that we needed to improve how we import and think smarter about our carbon. Um, our managing director actually kicked things off um, when there was the 2019 climate strikes. He um, was wanting his daughter to go along and then thought actually that he had a lot of um, sway in what happens in his business and thought why not start at home. So um, we started on our Carbon Zero journey and we've now been Carbon Zero certified for two years, um, which is really exciting. It was quite a change, um, but we've seen some really positive impacts. Um, the first thing that we looked at was our supply chain. So as we ship most of our products over from different countries, uh, we had to think how we could improve the carbon emissions resulting from that. Um, one of the main things that we did was looked at how much we put into our containers um, and how many orders that we place. So by ensuring that our containers were filled to the top and we placed bigger orders and actually reduced the amount of carbon that we produced. So we didn't have to keep ordering like heaps and heaps of times. 
Brilliant. That's just, yes. sorry, can I just add a, a follow up to that? That's such a cool story mm -hmm. about, you know, the way your journey started. Because um, we hear that mm -hmm. from other businesses where, you know, it's the kids badgering their parents to kind of do something. And that's, I think that's a real powerful motivator. Yeah. Um, our management director is very passionate about um, the cause now. And we've implemented a lot of changes throughout the business, which I'm sure I can touch on later. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Chris, over to you. Yeah, so for us um, in our industry, uh, just a bit of setting the scene that it's normal for the servicing of garden and lawns to be quite high emissions. There's a lot of contractors out there with old diesel vans and multiple petrol tools. Um, I wanted to take that and do something completely different, but providing the same service. And so it's been a long journey in reducing um, emissions from us starting way back in 2016 when we got our a hybrid vehicle. And um, eventually that died. I don't even know why it died. <laughs> it just up and died. So I was quite happy to move completely to electric. And um, that's been a wonderful move. We got our first electric uh, van back in 2018. And not only the environmental benefits of that, but because of the um, the cost savings and, and the running costs, uh, we were able to purchase a, a second identical electric van um, within two years. So um, we've got two two electric vans and, and we still have one petrol car that um, is a Toyota, so it just keeps going. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been wonderful to move it um, over to, to the vast majority being electric and um, the the vehicles are really enjoyable to drive um, it just doesn't like uh, I'm trying to think how to describe it but then anyone with an electric van, uh, vehicle will be able to tell you just how comfortable they are compared to to um, to a, a, an older uh, van that um, most of our competitors still use um, so yeah, it, it was it was good from that perspective, but also they're, they're safe, they're, um, and just that cost saving is, is excellent. Uh, you, so you must have been one of the, you know, 2018, um, there weren't, weren't be many businesses um, with electric vans at that stage. You must None. have been your trendsetter there, not just in your sector, yeah. but in your, in, you know, across um, the and, and to be honest, I, I took a bit of a calculated risk on it because um, the technology was, the knowledge wasn't uh, as widely as known about it. And um, it was new to me. It was our first electric vehicle. Um, so we we took a risk and it just paid off big time. Um, so yeah, really happy we did. And that is now a model that we're working with. Um, we're sticking with the Nissan EMV 200. They're, they're working really well for us um, but yeah that's a model that we will continue to do when next vehicle needs um, to be added to the fleet. Cool and was it what was the motivation for getting that? Getting um, I, I'm, I'm one of these people that I just want to see more action less talking <laughs> Um, so I, I just wanted to get onto it and to play our part that we were going to be um, the sustainable option in our industry for Auckland. And um, if that meant that we were the first to it and we we took that calculated risk, then we were, we were going to do it. Um, we just weren't going to hold back. And and so, it's yeah, I don't regret it at all. It's been, it's been good. Fantastic. Love that, Chris. All right, Jade, moving on to you. Um, I know you've recently um, made a factory in Christchurch. Do you want to talk us through why you yeah. did that and the benefits you've seen? Yeah, sure. Um, so as I said, we import uh, most of our goods from overseas and the majority come into Auckland, uh, the Auckland port. Um, we realised that we could save a heck of a lot of carbon emissions if we actually had a warehouse in Christchurch instead of freighting it down country like we previously did. Um, so we decided to bite the bullet and get a big Christchurch warehouse and it's worked out really well so far. Um, since we started our carbon journey, we've saved 50 tonnes of um, freight from trucking. 
So that's now been taken away from what we initially used to produce. Um, and also we've made our customers in the South Island a lot happier because mm -hmm. yeah, they have a huge warehouse now that they can go and just pick up product from and it doesn't take as long as it used to to transport it um, down to Christchurch. Um, we also have a Wellington um, kind of 3PL where we also store products. So it's just about finding ways to make the customers happy and also finding ways to reduce our carbon emissions. And, and from a cost perspective, in terms of having that warehouse in Christchurch, that's been positive as well. You know, the numbers. It actually, it actually has. Um, the cost to freight things around New Zealand is very high. Um, so by getting a Christchurch warehouse, it actually worked out well financially for us. Also, it's a nice base for our um, South Island office to have. So they come via coastal shipping down to Littleton? Okay. Yeah, so it's um, now shipped to Littleton instead of Auckland, um, which yeah. has yeah, had drastic changes in the amount of carbon that we produce. Yeah, excellent. That's really cool. Um, and the fact that, you, you know, your customers, you know, get some benefit as well because, you know, secure or, you know, quicker supply or... Exactly. Well, we do, uh, we have projects all throughout New Zealand. So it's nice that we can have product available for our applicators in the South Island instead of them having to wait and everything having to come through Auckland. Awesome. All right, we've had a question come through. Are your tools also electric, Chris, switched from petrol? But I think this is sort of a question yeah. for both of you. I think you can both answer this potentially. Uh, yes, so absolutely. Yeah. All of our all of our tools are electric. Um, we completed. We started that move in. Um, so just looking at dates, I think that was back in 2015. But we completed that in 2017, and um, so we've got um, all all of the the tools using the Ego brand. Um, at the time, they were industry leader on it, and they've now come out with commercial um, uh, tools. Um, but now there's a number of options available for other contractors that want to um, just look into what they specifically need. Um, so the van itself has a solar on the top. Get up there. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, and that charges a deep cycle battery, which then um, powers all of the, the tools. Um, doing the vast majority from solar with the last bit being done by um, mains power at the end of each day. And um, so the, yeah, it's probably off the, a bit off the topic of moving goods, but but the goods we move are electric and they, these are a pleasure to work with. And they, they too, that's another cost savings. And, um, and it's just better for health as for our staff mm. and everything, not having those emissions. And I, I just hate the the smell of fumes. So when we first made that move, um, yeah, I, ju I just loved um, working with them. And, and they're grunty ass, uh, so they're certainly doing the job that we're asking them to do because we, we take them to paddocks that haven't been mowed in a long time and do some good paddock bashing with them and they all, all seem to work out, so <laughs> it's good. <laughs> just had a response to the, um, Simon who asked that question, um, just said, so cool. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, uh, per personal bugbear of mine is to see leaf blowers, petrol powered leaf blowers. Yeah. So, uh, you know, <laughs> nothing that seems to be, um, you know, kind of more symbolic of um, a change we need to make. Um, yeah, <laughs> right. And that's a, obviously a fully electric one. Yeah, and they're quite quiet as well. Sorry, I didn't mention that. But... So compared to something that you have to, you know, keep pulling the string of a million times and then spilling fuel around and, and then making a, a, a racket for not a lot of action, <laughs> these are a lot better. Mm. Awesome. And Jade, you've got some electric well, machinery, I think. Yeah, well, we don't exactly have electric tools, but um, our fleet is entirely electric now, which um, is a tool for our guys. Um, so we started the process of changing all of our petrol powered cars um, to electric leaves, which was quite um, an investment initially, but it's seen us really good in the long run. 
um, we were spending about $44,000 a year on petrol, um, which is now pretty much non-existent because we have our electric cars. Um, we also had gas powered forklifts, which we changed into electric forklifts. So our warehouse team has been quite excited about that. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't realize, but electric um, cars are way faster and a lot more zippy than <laughs> petrol cars, which I'm sure you know, Chris. Yeah. Um, initially, <laughs> some of our staff, yeah um, <laughs> initially, some of our staff were a bit hesitant, but we have a load of converts now. Um, it's definitely the future, getting electric-based um, machinery and cars. is just a no-brainer now. Yeah. Cool. And in terms of, um, you know, you mentioned the, the staff, it, you know, has it been, it's obviously a good selling point for you in terms of recruiting people and retaining people. It um, is. It is. Um, a lot of our staff value sustainability a lot more than we in, when we initially started. Um, Office-wide, everyone's quite happy to have an electric car. Um, we have a fast charging station um, in our warehouse just behind me. And we also are looking at getting solar panels on our roof to then power that. So that's pretty cool. But also our electricity providers, Ecotricity Anyway, who are a carbon zero organization. So it's kind of offset anyway. Cool. Yeah. And Chris, what about you from the people who work with you? Um, good yeah, well, they sound, yeah, they're certainly comfortable and, and, and um, safe vehicles uh, to use. Um, the, the having a bit of a bonnet and, and just those modern features like um, having, you know, dual airbags and um, I think everything has ABS now, but um, those, those are just little comforts. The, the air con is really good in summer um, because when you're moving around a lawn or a garden and then you, you hop in the hot van, it's, it can be a bit of an oven. Um, so hopping in one of these and having the air con um, quickly uh, make you comfortable is quite good. Um, getting staff on board was, uh, the, the point was um, a bit more to do with how we use the vans and the run. So it was more of my side of planning it well so that I would know where abouts in the day uh, they would need to do a charge. And we don't actually do a lot of fast charging because the range is actually okay. Um, but there are service areas like Piha that we have to send a petrol vehicle to because it's just not practical. Um, and we're going all the way up to Whangaparoa and so if one of the vans is up there, it definitely needs to charge before it comes back, otherwise it's not coming home. Um, likewise with, with Howick, and we're, we're in West Auckland and, and Henderson, so it's quite a very spread out area. And um, so it was more uh, a challenge for me to learn how the best way of deploying each vehicle was, and then um, talking through with staff when, when abouts they would need to um, charge, and, or if they'd need to charge. And so we've had a bit of practice of that and um, feel completely comfortable and know, we know what they can and can't do. Um, so it's been, quite, it's been good getting um, the, the staff just enjoy using these vans. Do you use any, um, you know, tools to help you with that route planning or is it just, you know, Google? And... Experience. <laughs> um, the plug share app is good for find, uh, just seeing where charges are. But um, because I'm pre-planning the, the routes for them uh, based on where the jobs are, I, I just know what uh, they can do and can't do. So, yeah, it, it's kind of all set up, all sorted now. But in those earlier days, it was something that we had to work through. It took a while of learning. And in terms of uh, customer appeal, um, presumably you're, you're kind of connecting in with that sustainability-minded um, base? Yes, yeah, certainly. We're, we're sustainable. Um, we're stunning gardens done sustainably. And um, so there are certainly clients that are choosing us specifically because of our um, sustainable focus. Does that apply to you, Jade, as well? Sorry, Holly. Um, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, our, um, in our industry, we deal with a lot of architects and obviously architects are designing the future. So they are very um, wary of products and companies and what impact they're having on the world. So definitely since we became um, 
more in tune with our carbon emissions, we've seen a positive um, uh, take from them. I think they all are quite happy that we have made a change and that's what we're trying to encourage other people and other um, suppliers to do is look at their carbon emissions and see where they can make some changes. Cool. That's quite a good um, lead on question. So how, how do you work with your suppliers to try and get them excited and jumping, jumping on board in terms of taking climate action as well? Any tips for? Um, I, think, I think just talking about it, opening, opening up a conversation. Um, a lot of our suppliers in Europe have started looking at um, their factories and how to make them more efficient. Um, one of the companies that we work with um, is a paint company in um, South Auckland and they recently put solar panels on their warehouse. So it's just starting a conversation about it and saying that it's actually not as hard as people think to do. And you can actually save quite a bit of money in the long run. It's just the initial cost, which people may freak out about, but it actually ends up being cost saving in the long run. So you've obviously got your financial people fully on board. I mean, it helps if you're managing directors, obviously yes. keen on it, but it still needs to go through the process, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it just, it's surprising how getting an electric fleet, getting a warehouse in Christchurch actually does make sense in terms of money long-term. So a lot of the sustainable action that we have done, some would say, oh, doesn't it cost a lot, but it actually makes sense to do it in the long run and we want to be mm. creating like a sustainable environment and actually making things work not just um thinking about money <laughs> awesome cool um it, it you know we're in looking ahead you know where do you see opportunities to do even more good stuff um i mean i guess from you jade you know with a european supply base um, they're kind of leading the world, really, in sustainable and climate action. So that's, uh, you know, you kind of got a natural advantage there because you can leverage off some of the good stuff that they're doing up there. Um, anything else that's on your radar? Um, we, we're currently trying to get, so we're in a, a complex where our warehouse is now in Auckland, and we are trying to get the whole thing to have solar panels on it, the whole complex. So that's probably five other quite large companies. Um, so our goal would be to have the whole place run on solar and to do, um, yeah, just encourage other people to start thinking about their own businesses. Cool. Chris, anything, you know, what, what, what's next for you? Um, yeah, I kind of feel we've done um, what we want with, with the vehicle side of things. Um, I, th I think it's more uh, moving to other areas, such as moving people, which is where um, bikes come into it. We're sorry, making you all dizzy here. Um, you, the use of e-bikes is, is something I'm, I'm keen to get um, happening more with our business. We, we have... Um, previously experimented with moving uh, like a lawnmower and line trimmer blower with a trailer and um, for practical reasons it, it, it doesn't tend to get a lot of use um, so that's something that I feel is not yet finished and we need to uh, look at that again to utilize like the cycle paths around our area more and mm -hmm. um, yeah possibly one or two people teams with um, with uh, like bike trailers or even cargo bikes uh, that are all electric um, so they can get up the, the hills around here. And, um, and But they need to carry enough gear to service enough jobs um, just to make it practical. So that, that's an area that is a work in, a work in progress. Um, although the, um, you know, with one of our e-bikes gets um, daily use um it would be it would be good to move more out of um out of the vehicles and into into bikes um as you all know auckland has horrendous uh, congestion issues so as great as an electric van is um moving out of uh, a vehicle on the on the road altogether is um is even better cool no great to see your ambition is kind of you know there's, there's always a next step to do, um, yeah. despite all the good stuff you've already done. 
I'm, I'm aware we've um, we haven't really covered the sort of uh, the, the the heavy freight movement of goods, um, but uh, you know, obviously, well, through your your experience, Jade, in terms of the switch from moving it by road freight through to shipping, that's the really important message um, to to convey here. Holly, did you have any other questions um, that we have on the list here? No, I'm happy with that. What about you? Um, oh, maybe, I mean, uh, it, looking outside of your own business, have, are, are there any other businesses that um, have inspired you and what to, or what you're doing or aspire to do? Um, well, in terms of me personally, um, we're right next to Eco Store. So I've always quite admired um, what they do in New Zealand and all their um, initiatives in terms of refilling plastic um, bottles and thinking about single-use plastic a lot. So um, I think they're a really inspiring business um, and it's quite cool that we're right next door to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Chris, I guess you're, you're providing inspiration to others a, a lot, but uh, is there anyone you kind of look to? Yeah, well, yeah, I there's not a lot of other people doing uh, exactly what we're doing, but it has been good actually in the last couple of years seeing um, some other competitors starting to do similar. Um, so, um, yeah, we do, we do know of a couple of our companies that uh, have at least moved, say, all of their tools to electric. Um, or they've got their, their van electric, but not, their, not yet their tools. So I, I think eventually what we're doing will just become normal. It's just we've got a way to go on that. Um, and in terms of our suppliers, we like to have like long-term uh, relationships with our um, suppliers. And um, so when our needs change, um, like we're needing, say, um, the bringing in of, of more options on the tools that's something like i communicate to our mower shop and that's been a change because the local mower shop used to get a lot of business from us on fixing up our old petrol um, tools but when those all disappeared some years ago um business dropped off from them so there was a challenge there for them to change into um more of the sales of the new equipment um to put that in uh, perspective like our um, our mowers uh, that we're using are not actually um, commercial mowers. They are actually um, domestic. And in four years of commercial use, they've had the wheel bearings change twice. Uh, so it's very minimal maintenance. Mm -hmm. So it's, when, when one company changes, their supply chain has, it has an effect on it. And, and so they, there needs to be adaption. Cool. Um, on my mind, Holly, uh, you might be mentioning this in the close, but before, um, also, we've got our Climate Action, oh, our Sustainable Business Awards that we run every year, uh, SBN runs, and we've got Climate Action Leader and Climate Action Innovator categories. I don't know if you've looked at those um, so far, but please take a look because I think you, you should look to enter. We have had a look. <laughs> cool. Good. Good, good. I'll get on to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm thinking we should wrap this up here, but um, just wanted to say a massive thank you to Jade and Chris for joining us and sharing your story to date. It's really inspiring hearing from real-life businesses that are tackling climate action head-on and seeing some awesome benefits, cost savings, emissions reductions, mm -hmm. staff engagement, um, and thank you so much for sharing um, that with us all. So yes, this is the third um, Climate Action webinar done. We've got two more left. Next week, we will be looking into um, our work sites, site operations, um, so diving into that. So please feel free to join us um, if you are a site-based organization. Um, and then finally, our last one, we will be wrapping it up with making and designing products. So if, uh, um, uh, register for these webinars on our website. Um, and then, yes, like Phil said, uh, awards is coming up, two climate action awards that you can um, enter. The first um, stage in the process is relatively simple, so hopefully it's not too time consuming. We totally understand um, that you know, award entries can usually be quite time consuming. So we have thought about this and 
hopefully it's not. Um, but yeah, I think that's every, everything. Thank you so much um, to all of you for joining us. We hope um, you learned something and that you enjoyed hearing from Jade and Chris. Uh, as said, check out the toolbox, have a go, start creating your action plan and um, share it on social media and um, get it out there. We want as many businesses as possible in New Zealand taking climate action. So thank you very much and hopefully we'll see you next week. Wonderful. Kaki te ano. Kaki te ano.